part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Hey, for the first part of this episode, everybody, we're going to hear our good pal Brian at Manchild of Steel's thoughts on the James Gunn slate. He recorded this when it happened. He didn't get to make our live show. So check out Brian's thoughts and then we'll continue. So my thoughts about the DC lineup launched by James Gunn today, I'll start with what I'm excited about. I'm excited for the Lantern Show. Very excited for the Lantern Show. I am a huge ass Green Lantern fan, uh, and I just, I want it bad. Um, but I am a little intrigued that they're going to go with Hal Jordan and John Stewart here. And the picture he decided to show was, uh, looks like an Earth One, uh, versions. Now, I didn't read Earth One Green Lantern. I heard a little bit about it. So, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, I would have liked more of a Jeff Johns, Green Lantern Corps recharge type thing. Uh, or Tales of Green Lantern Corps. Uh, I'm, I'm really intrigued how it's going to go. Uh, I want to see who's going to play Hal Jordan. Uh, my hope is Bradley Cooper. Um, I think that he would fit very good. Uh, also, John Hamm would fit good. Um you know, I, I, I am intrigued to see where that's going to go. Um, I am very excited for Booster Gold. Uh, G- Booster Gold is a character that, uh, I've grown to love, mostly reading the, the 52 series after Infinite Crisis. Um, I think there's a lot of potential with Booster Gold for someone that's, you know, from the future, just trying to be a hero, kind of uses social media, um, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do with Booster Gold, so I, I am intrigued in that. Uh, the Waller Show, very excited that for that. Viola Davis is freaking amazing. Uh, that's going to open up a whole big uh, can of worms for Suicide Squad capabilities, and I think it's I think it's definitely needed. Um, Creature Commandos. Um, it looks like Frankenstein's part of that cast, and Weasel, and like a Bride of Frankenstein. Um, I like monsters, I like creatures, so I'm intrigued. Um, one thing that got me really excited the most is that he said that whoever voices the, them in the show will play them in live action. That's genius. That's what always should have had, happened. So uh, I, I, I like where that's going. Um, I went absolutely apeshit for the announcement of Swamp Thing with the dark orange as a Swamp Thing. I effing love Swamp Thing, as Tyler and James can tell you. Love Swamp Thing, uh, especially Scott Snyder's run, Alan Moore. Uh, I grew up watching the anime series, the, the original show on USA, uh, Wes Craven's version. Uh, let's not talk about the return of Swamp Thing, <laughs> but, uh, I love Swamp Thing. Um, so excited for that. Uh, I am not a huge uh, fan of Supergirl. Um, I never really have been. I've been more of a fan of Power Girl. Um, but Supergirl is growing on me a little bit as I read. Uh, I've been doing a chronological read of DC Comics uh, since 2018, starting from the very beginning with Astro Comics number one, and now I'm uh, right on uh, Batman Rest in Peace, about to enter Final Crisis. So reading Teen Titans and uh, Kara's story and how she's really alone and stuff, I, I like that aspect because I like the aspect of Power Girl. So I'm intrigued to see, uh, to see this new version of Supergirl. And where it could go. Um, I'm very interested, because I'm a huge Batman fan, into the Brave and the Bold uh, 
but or or they introduced to the, the DCU Batman again. Freaking stupid. But anyway, uh it's based on Grant Morrison's comics, which I'm reading right now. Again, uh love Grant Morrison. I think Grant Morrison is probably the best Batman writer. Um and they're adding Damien here. My only worry here is Where's Dick? Where's Jason? Like, if we're going to start Batman the DCU, and I know this is just a part of the story and part of the lineup, but I don't think you can start with Damien. You have to build up to Damien. So that has me somewhat concerned because I love Nightwing. Um, the authority thing here, I don't really care for. It kind of looks like it's going to do... Maybe he has an Eternals thing. I have no freaking clue. Uh, but James does very well with obscure characters that we don't know about it and makes them A-listers. So, I mean, look at the Guardians. So, we'll see there. Um, I'm very excited for Superman Legacy. Uh, considering that the picture is All-Star Superman, you know, this could be a retrospective thing uh, of Superman's whole career. And could give us the Superman we want. Uh, I know that Tyler and James really, really love uh, Man of Steel. Uh, I thought that Henry Cavill was a great choice for Superman. I thought he looked like Superman. Um, but the overall tone of what Zack did in Man of Steel, I wasn't overly crazy about. Um, I thought a lot of mistakes were made with Batman versus Superman in terms of showing Doomsday right away. Uh, we didn't have enough time with Superman. They didn't really care if he died. Um, but all in all, my whole feelings about that are the fact that Zack didn't get to finish his story. So, um, because he never got to finish his story, you know, I really can't, and I don't think anybody can give a full opinion of, uh, of what Zack's vision was for Zack Superman. But uh, I want to see brighter colors. I want to see a brighter Superman. Uh, Zack Superman was a little too 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 dark for me. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I'm excited for that, and that, uh, that we have a date. So uh, really, really excited for that. Um, and the fact that chapter one of this whole thing is going to be called uh, Gods and Monsters. I mean, what a great title there. Um, could tap into the supernatural, you know, how DC characters are like gods. Um, could even bring Zack Snyder back. Uh, who knows? No, that probably won't happen. <laughs> uh, but uh, the fact that Flash is going to reboot everything, we always predicted that. Um, but I'm very more intrigued for Aquaman because they are not moving Aquaman up before Flash. I mean, Aquaman too. They are going right to, uh, Sazam and then going into Flash and then, and Flash reboots everything. And then they're going into Aquaman. So it makes me wonder because Ben Affleck's Batman is in Aquaman too. So now I'm wondering if Ben Affleck is our DCU Batman. Uh, but why get rid of Henry? But if you're going to do a DCU Batman and then bring in Damien, that older Batman would make sense. So does Dick and Jason already exist? Are they going to... Uh, uh, so many questions about that. That's my main question right now. Uh, all right, I got to get back to work, guys. Uh, that's my two cents, or eight minutes, nine minutes of two cents. Uh, love you guys, and thank you for listening. And uh, back to you with sports. The opinions heard are up Brian's alone. If you have any questions, check out Manchild of Steel on Twitter. Thank you. I want to say something about the announcement today. Th- these were dope. I like the Superman one. I am excited about um Swamp Thing. I'm excited about the Supergirl one. I'm excited about 
and all the other ones that I'm excited about. Because I am so pumped up and excited. And I have a theory about the Superman one, about the villain being Brainiac, because it makes way, way sense. So, that's it. Oh, that's all I have to say. Bye. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find out all of our information. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me today, as always, is the Superman of Red. You know him, ladies. You love him, guys. He's your best pal, Mr. James Cole, the Man of Steel himself. What's up, Red Superman? What's up, buddy? Yeah. And with us today is also a special go- a guest, ghost, guest, uh, <clears throat> ghost, Mr. Superboy Solomon. What's up, bro? What's up, everybody? This is Superman in Black. And I can't wait to do this with you. I just decided to do this with my dad and write this in my journal, which became a big fail. Yep. So I, I'm just excited. I know. We are too. So today's episode, we're going to touch on the news and then we're going to get into uh, the last two episodes of season one of Legion and then a few other things like some comics and stuff. We're going to kind of do things a little bit backwards than we usually do. But news-wise, not really much, except the Penguin series will be released in 2024, and it should start filming here soon. And it's supposed to pick up about a week after The Batman ends and help segue us into The Batman Part 2. Okay. I'm I'm looking forward to that. (laughs) Yeah, so am I. And, you know, people, um, you know, going back to the whole Slate thing, that's one of those things that James Gunn didn't touch on, but we do know is happening. So there's still more stuff to come from the slate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of other projects that have been, um, you know, shuffled around, moved around, things that were already going into production and um, stuff like that, like uh, – uh, It'll be interesting when we finally see the DCU, like the DCU, um, the DC Studios banner, yep. as well as like the DC Elseworlds banner that comes up in front of these things. And they both better have their own theme music. That's all I'm saying. And then the last note, which is was announced the day after the slate, which I'm kind of like, why didn't they announce it like before? But Pennyworth has been canceled. After three seasons of The Origin of Batman's Butler, it has been canceled. And I liked, there's a good chunk of Pennyworth I like, but the season three was really good. That was the yeah, best season. You know, I, 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 you know, I just can't imagine. I couldn't, I couldn't think of, like, where would Alfred Pennyworth end up? Yeah, I mean. I just it, can't, I, I can't fathom what, what would happen there. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to say this season three, the, the, they did some world building and stuff in Pennyworth that 
really frustrates me because we didn't get to really see where it went. Mm. Because there's definitely two things that have happened that we need to expand on that they're going to leave us hanging on. So they better at least do a comic series to follow it up because uh, I want to spoil it, but I don't want to spoil it. I know Pennyworth has a comic series. Yeah, but I need to pick up Um, the threads for the end of the season. Yeah, I I don't know what the series uh, is. I haven't read any of it. And uh, we just started watching. I've seen most of season one. I didn't get to finish it. And then I didn't see season two. I didn't have epics or anything. Um, but now that it's on HBO and we just started watching it. So I started from the beginning. So I look forward to finishing it and I won't spoil anything. I'll just let James take the ride. Everybody. Ha ha. So (laughs) so speaking of theme song. Okay. I made my own theme song today. He did. He busted out his guitar and was working on making a little bit of an arrangement. It, it would, it was good. I was impressed. I was okay. Everything was okay. I mean, my dad took a video of it. Not not a video on YouTube, guys. Like a video on your phone. Yeah. Like that it's, my, it's my boy. That's all I got to say. I know. Cool. Okay. So now we're going to talk about, we're finishing up um, The Legion. This is the series that we're doing. We're building up. Soon we'll be reviewing the Legion scene. And Solomon and I are sitting here wearing our Legion flight rings, aren't we, Solomon? We both have our Legion rings. Um, I I have a question for all of you guys. Okay. What is your favorite Legion? Yeah, what's your favorite member of the Legion, James? Um... uh, You can't say Superman slash Superboy. That well, you can't you can't man, do it. I know that's... that was that's what I said, and Solomon just kind of gave me a, a look. So, no, oh, I mean I'm trying to think from this show um, some different ones. Um, I'm going Bouncing Boy. He's dope. I was kind of leaning Bouncing Boy as well. Uh, he's he's really he's really cool. He's really funny um, throughout the se- the throughout the series, and then these last two episodes uh, when because he was put in charge at the end of the last episode. Uh, the, as the leader of the legion, so uh, he he got to he got to take the reins and call the shots. It was it, it did a really good job. Solomon, who who do you say? I say Brainiac Five. Yep, Solomon. He is <laughs> he is smart and he's not like Brainiac. I, I like. Him. Brandy. I thought Sun Boy was kind of cool looking. Man, you took you took our you took our thunder, man. We were about to love on some Sun Boy because me and Solomon were watching it, and it was like Sun Boy. We're like Sun Boy. Where is this guy? Where did he come from? And then all of a sudden, we're like, "Come on, Sun Boy, what are you doing, man?" Yeah. Because um, uh, I had to keep explaining to Solomon, like he's been watching the show with me, but like I was like, "Yeah, Solomon, there's a lot of Legionnaires." Um. Like, that. There's also a girl that we got. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about her. We'll talk about her. We got excited. But, okay. So, I made some notes real quick about the Legion show. And I don't know if we touched on this real quick. So, before we dive in, just to kind of paint the tapestry of where DC cartoons were, um, Teen Titans, the original Teen Titans, ran from 03 to 06. Okay? It ended in 06. The Legion ran from 06 to 08. Crypto the Superdog was 05 to 06. The Batman was 2004 to 2008. That's only years. Batman the Brave and the Bold was 08 to 2011. Uh, Beware the Batman was 2011. Young Justice was 20, 2010 to 2013. Then 19 to 22. Teen Titans Go was 2013. Green Lantern was 2011. So just thinking like the Legion happened during the time of the Batman. So that just kind of helps give you an idea where the state of DC cartoons are at the time. Which I was not born that time. Yeah, so I'm in 2015. You weren't born yet. Okay. (laughs) Also, also some of my friends. It's all right. It's okay. So we are looking at season one, episodes 12 and 13. Uh, Sundown Part 1 and Sundown Part 2. Now, a quick 
synopsis for Sundown Part 1, the Legion is put to the ultimate test when an ancient weapon known as a Sun Eater comes to life. The Legion mounts a heroic defense, but the Sun Eater proves too powerful. Now, at full strength, the unstoppable Sun Eater sets its sight on Earth. Dum, dum, dum. So, let's it, get into it. I mean, if it eats the Earth's sun, the whole world's going to die. Yeah. I told that to Solomon. I was like, Solomon, if our sun disappeared, we would all freeze and die. He's like, <gasps> I was like, yeah, oh, sun's yeah, pretty important. happened pretty quick. I'm like, sounds pretty important, buddy. I think if our sun went out, I think we have like seven minutes. And then we'd be completely dead. Ah, oh, that's really fast. <laughs> because I think I think that's how much, if I remember, it takes about seven minutes from the sun's light to get to us. So there would still be light coming after the sun was destroyed for about seven minutes before. So the episode opens up with the Fatal Five. We see... Um, Bouncing Boy leading and Brainiac 5 has some sweet armor on. Yeah, I know. And one by one, the Legion, the Legion members are taking out. Um, the, the Fatal 5 busts into Bouncing Boy and then all of a sudden we realize it's... What is it, James? Uh, a Sun Eater? Oh, you mean the beginning. Um, the Fatal tra- 5? Yeah, it's a training scenario. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the training scenario. I was like, I was like, wait, this has to be a training scenario. I know. I was like, dang, did we? I, I was. My first thought was either we were going to jump back, you know, and do one of those things where, like, after the the it would come on and it would go back and tell us like, this is what happened in the past, you know, building up to it. But we we have this big fallout with bouncing boy and. You know, he's basically feeling like he's not able to lead. And then, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, there's yeah. a there's a line drop that I caught. It said, mention the last crisis. Then later they referenced the great crisis. And um, we learned that Lightning Lad and Cosmic Boy both had failed the test like nine and 11 times. And Beast Boy's take or Beast Boy, Bouncing Boy's taking it really hard that he's not able to lead the team through this scenario. And then uh, Superman ends up putting on armor, and they go out because a Sun Eater emerges, and it's heading towards the Red Sun that they're near. Yeah, Superman has a uh, armor that'll protect him from the Red Sun. But after we get the, sh- but they go ahead to the Sun Eater and Superman's armor gets destroyed. Yeah, Superman's armor gets destroyed. He's basically not able to do much. Is that when we meet? But um, what happens? We meet a lot of cloaked, like robots, and um. I know Brainiac Five keep taking them out. Yeah, Brainiac 5 is fighting these robots, and we get a really interesting thing where Brainiac 5 and Saturn Girl team up and create a thought cast to try to interrupt the the brain, the robots. And um, but and then our, our new favorite Legion hero, which we need to get a toy of. Okay, we need an action figure, Sunboy. Sunboy <laughs> shows up. Yes. And he distracts the Sun Eater. What? Oh, hold up. Who is Sun Boy, by the way? And this Legion. Can I say it? He's kind of crazy. <laughs> sun Boy. Sun Man. Sun Lad. <laughs> that, that's Solomon. Sun Lad. Get out sun there. Lad. Yeah, get out there. Sun <laughs> Lad. <laughs> hey. Get it? Sailor Sun- Sunny Gal. Oh, <laughs> nice. His name should his name should be Sun. Sun who Sun who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we get this really cool scene because uh, with Pharaoh Lad getting charged up by both Lightning Lad 
and Cosmic Boy, and he makes a powerful blast. And he actually misses the core control element from the controller, which is a person. Yeah, like a big electromagnetic blast. Uh, and the Sun Eater ends up eating uh, the son of Cheyenne Prime, the Red Sun. And as soon as it eats the sun, it becomes more powerful and then basically disappears six light years away. Somehow. Right? It's got like fast speed or something like that? I mean, it was a pretty intense packed episode. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, the um, what I thought was really cool is when they said like when it like engulfed the sun when it ate the sun how their their solar system model broke down and all the orbits broke away yeah and it showed how the planets started drifting all the planets were gone yeah and then I mean, so they, that... they do say that there was no that uh th that the the solar system that they were in was uninhabited which is good. Which is good. You know, yeah. It sucks for the planet, but... Well, then in the next... I mean, in the next so episode, that... you know, the Sun Eater's heading towards Earth. Towards our So, sun. Sundown Part 2. With the Sun Eater on a direct course for Earth's sun, the Legion has no choice but to ask bitter enemies to help stop it. Superman, meanwhile, has his toughest battle yet when he discovers the stealthy alien controlling the Sinister Machine. In the end, the Legion triumphs but a terrible cost. Part two, sundown. Hmm. All right. So, so this um, episode was really good. I, I uh, you know, I had never seen it before. Like we, that's why we're doing this and everything. And Solomon was awesome watching it with him. But in the beginning, you see that they were, they do release the fatal five, but then we get to meet our new favorite member of the Legion. Shrinking Violet. Shrinking Violet. Hmm. Which me and Dad were like, what is this person? <laughs> we both were like, huh? But no, our biggest what the heck, who is this person came a moment later when they were instructing, Bouncing Boys instructing everyone where they were going to get different parts for this machine they're going to make. And we meet Joe Na? As in J-O-N-A-H? Jonah? And me and Salma both are like, <laughs> who's Jonah? <laughs> when did I miss Jonah? <laughs> right. There were, like, uh, there were a lot yeah. of extra legionnaires in these two episodes. They were just like, just put someone in the background with a costume. Do we need to give them a name? No, it's the Legion. <laughs> just call them Yaya. Go, go. You know, give them crap names. It's the Legion. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but Superman does the scroll the controller and he, he enters a huge battle and he uses infrared vision. I thought that was pretty cool. And when he goes off on his own, Brainy says to Superman, if we don't stop this, here's a time bubble. It'll take you home. And I thought, you know, setting it up, I thought that my thought was, oh, it's going to end where something's going to happen. And Superman's going to get sent back home without knowing what happens or something, but that's not what happened. Uh, um, no, that's not what happened. I thought something like that might happen too. Like he gets booted out like before they're going to lose or something. And then, but the end episode was, was what? sad. It was sad. Do you want to tell about what happened? I forgot what his name is. Pharaoh boy. Pharaoh. Pharaoh lad, right? Yes. Pharaoh lad. <laughs> Pharaoh lad. Was it lad or boy? I, see, that's lad, lad. everybody's lad or boy, and it gets confusing. I think it was lad. I think it was. I think lad. so. So tell, so tell him, so tell him. But feral lad sees the legion can do this, but he can. So he goes out to outer space. He goes inside. The Sun Eater, and look at the robot. He and he he turns himself to metal, 
and the part that was damaged on the on the weapon that they built they weren't connected and he turned himself metal and connected and became the fuse basically the conductor and the weapon went off destroying the sun eater yep pharaoh lad sacrificed himself which here's something because that's what heroes do did a pharaoh lad actually sacrifice himself or did he not that's a good question because we do we do get a shot at the end of the episode of like pharaoh lad's body or like turned to stone or something on like an asteroid we also we also get a really good shot of having a pharaoh lad st- statue in the legion yeah um I, that's what i was wondering i was like are they like showing us his dead body or is this a tease that he possibly survived i don't know I mean, we don't know. We just have to wait and find out. I mean, it could be something really interesting. Uh, my favorite part is when Superman was fighting the controller and he just like starts beating him and rips all of his armor off. And then every time the controller goes to escape, he uses his heat vision to blow it away. But then, like an idiot, the guy goes to jump through a portal. Superman grabs him, tells him if he comes back, he'll finish this and then throws him through the portal. Why don't I just like lock him in Legion jail, man? Right? Or just show him out of space. <laughs> so, Solomon's getting you know, all his tapping into his anti heroism over here. I'm sorry. I really like anti heroes. Like Shadow or Red Hood. I like those anti heroes. Those are my two favorite anti heroes. You know, but then my favorite part was um, the big part where we find out that the shrinking violet was actually hidden inside the bad guys. So when shrinking uh, violet popped out of, I can never remember all the fatal five people's names, but basically they were trying to betray the Legion, double cross them. And we knew that shrinking violet disappeared. For phase two, is what they told us. And she saved the day. What'd you think, James? <laughs> I was I was wondering like how the um how the stop it would have been like it would have been naive of the of it to be like, yeah, no, the the fatal five double cross they didn't see that. So you know I'll to see that like the boy was prepared for that and uh he had shrinking violet take down the emerald empress from inside her eyeball <laughs> that was awesome yeah and, and then the last scene is clark returning to smallville for his new job and he says metropolis bound so because he's not he's a young superman he's not technically superboy right now because legally he couldn't be superboy but that was season one man i i enjoyed it what about you overall solomon i did yeah solomon's really ready for season two he was asking if we could watch more and i told him no because (laughs) i didn't want to get too far ahead because i'm actually really looking forward to season two because i've seen nothing from season two Oh, me neither. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it as well. Uh, I, I want to. I'm. I'm looking forward to checking it out. You know, um, I've seen. Uh, I've seen that that Superman suit, that older version, and I've like been curious as to what that's all about. So, all right. Well, Solomon. Hey, buddy. Thanks for joining us on this part of Krypton Report, man. So- I mean, thank you guys a lot. I mean, thank you guys a lot to letting me be on here. I, I, I want to be on here more. But... Yeah, of course, man. We got it's poor Solomon's bedtime. That's what happens when you're in second grade. Yeah, what? it happens, buddy. No, it's good to have you on. So, all right, buddy, you head on up to bed, and uh, I'll, we'll get you back soon. Okay. Yeah. Bye, bye, everybody. All right, that's Superboy Solomon signing off. So, 
a couple of quick things we want to talk about, like bringing back up. We, we, we touched on it quickly last time was the Funko Pops for the Flash movies were coming in March. But I don't think we mentioned the fact that the Funko Pop line will drop March 15th. And if you look at the Pop line, there is a General Zod and a Wonder Woman both for the Flash. Yes, yes, sir. And the rumor is that Dark Flash is suit supposed to be made of Kryptonian material. Ooh, curious. Right, curious and curiouser, right? So I just want, I wanted to bring that back up. Um, the other thing is, people are talking about the Slate, the Harley Quinn series. We don't know if it's going to keep going in animation. I kind of suspect it will, um, because it is animated and just be one of those Elseworlds shows. Well, something I heard when they were talking about not only the video, but like the press junket, the, the news that came out of that, um, that Harley Quinn, the animated series is supposed to continue. So I'm not, I haven't seen it with my own eyes, but that is what I heard from somebody yeah. saying they were covering the press junket as well. The one they did the day before the video was released. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. If it, it I mean, so. Um, so I just wanted to touch back on those cause we hadn't, um, mentioned them, but one comic that we did talk about that we both had read was Bane One Bad Day or Batman One Bad Day Bane, however they phrase it. James, you want to talk to the, the boys and girls about that comic? Um, so from what I could tell, like from the other ones, it doesn't seem like there's any specific, like in continuity time i mean they reference events clearly um for uh, yeah in time to time from for for these characters but like the yeah, the bane book difficulty. here um it's really interesting cuz it takes place like after bane's retirement from crime um he's uh all right from the top <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the really, the really interesting thing about this is, is Bane is retired. He's working as a Mexican wrestler, but he is living off of, he's the champ. He's living off of the day he broke the bat. Um, yep. Like that, that's the act that's going on is like, he breaks his back and everybody's cheering Bane and they go in the back and you see that it was a wrestling gag that the guy is fine. He's up and walking around and. Um, like they offer Bane, they, they pay Bane money. They offer him women. Um, but he goes back to his big mansion and his, all his pictures and the, um, mysterious Bane breaks the Batman giant blown up Gotham Gazette, uh, headline post, uh, uh, hung above his fireplace. <laughs> yep. Um, Somebody comes to his house, sneaks into his house, and brings Venom with him. Um, he's very upset about this. Um, Venom shouldn't exist. Him and Batman um, were supposed to have hunted down and destroyed all of uh, all of the Venom supply. And I think it's interesting just the way the story played out, where him and Batman work together. They still meet up later together. And Bane has the opportunity to take Venom, and he doesn't. Like, he's clean, and he's done with it. And we find out that the guy that brought him there was a setup by the original Doctor who created Venom in the first place. Yeah. Well, the inter- the, uh, the, big, the real interesting thing about them working together is this is post-Bane um, killing Alfred. Yeah, that was kind of my thought. Like, where does this fall? Because some of these books feel like they're continuity and some of them don't. So, I well, this one sure. definitely seems like it takes place almost in a bit of a future, a further yeah. future. Um, if Bane's kind of retired clean off of Venom and 
after he's killed because he killed Alfred and then he's supposed to be dead. Um, but I think there's a book in the task force Z, the zombie book, uh, with the Lazarus resin that, uh, you find out that Bane isn't dead. Yep. So I, I enjoyed, I have not continuity book yet. I have not, not enjoyed any of these books. The one bad day books. Um, um, I thought this was really cool because, I mean, like this this grudge that's a crazy character where his touch infects you with venom. Um, but the but Bane's one bad Bane's bad day is the day he broke the bat. Like he can't get past. It's the greatest thing he's ever done, and um, he can't get past that. He can't get by that, you know, mm-hmm. and he's trying to, he's trying to do something more. He's trying to do something, um, well, more at least. I mean, it sounds, he sounds more taking a, an anti turn here, but that may not, may not be the case. Who knows? But, um, he burns his, he burns the, uh, he burns the, the, Bane breaks the Batman uh, article, the headline. He burns it in in the uh, fireplace and drives off. So, I mean, it's kind of cool. You know, it's the first time seeing Bane post him uh, supposedly not being dead. Well, supposed to be being dead and then is not. Um, So he hasn't shown up in a continuity book and... I'm just, I thought this was a good story. I thought it was really well written and the art was really good as well. I 100% agree. But that will lead us to today's big comic book, which is Action 1051. Yes, sir. So, James, do you have your Action 1051 handy? I do, right here. Uh, I love this cover. I love the cover too. Um, I will say I'm not a hundred percent sold on John's new suit. That just kind of feels like it came out of nowhere. But it is a, I do like it. Now let me ask you this though, with this whole family. So on the cover we have the twins: Superman, Supergirl, Connor, John, Natasha Irons, and Kong Keenan. Should do you think Superman should like retain the like white hair in his temples, kind of like how he was in the authority? Make him look a little bit more, a little older since not too old, but like older since he's working with such a large group. Right. I mean, this, this image is very youthful, um, even for Superman, but I do think that if he did have it, um, did he have it during he had some of it during the war world saga didn't he because I know he did in the authority he had some until he like got back and now it's like gone oh until he got charged up again yep well, because now he's now he's like even more powerful. <laughs> but like I was saying, like you know, I think I think one thing that we need to establish here is John Kent needs his own moniker, or Connor needs his own moniker. They can't both exist as Superboy, okay? And John Kent can't exist as Superman, like also. That just doesn't work for me. Um, and we'll get to Kong Keenan in a minute. Because New Superman or the Superman of China is a really, really long name. Now, is Kara going by Supergirl or Superwoman right now? Um, I haven't seen anything specific either way. Yeah, I, I thought it was Supergirl, but I'd heard something, but I was just making sure. Uh, the twins are going to need some sort of name. And where is John Henry? You remember where John Henry is? 
Well, he's not on the cover. Right. But he is in the book. Right. So I'm just kind of like, what, what's up with him? But yeah, let's dig into the book because the book starts with the entire super family, including John Henry. That's why I asked what's up with him. Saving, it's called Speeding Bullets Part 1. I think they could come up with a better title, but whatever. But we see that there's protesters and starts a riot and the entire super family shows up to save the day. All of them, but crypto, he got, he got left out. And we see that the, what the, one of the people that's inciting everything is none other than our good friend who James. Metallo, John Corbin. Yeah. And so then we get, we're back at the, it gives us the address, 3822 West Main Metropolis, home of the Kents. And it looks like everybody's piled in, playing video games, playing games, period. And there's Crypto. See, he's there. He wasn't on the cover or in the rescue scene, but he's there. And I love this, that John goes to get Jenga to play with the twins and opens and finds his dad his cape and shield with chains from Warworld. And I don't think we've ever seen Lois move that fast. Considering she's the one without super speed. <laughs> right. I love I love the embarrassment. I mean Yeah. But I think it's hilarious at the same time. Um but this is an interesting dynamic where the Kents basically make a stain that Otha Ray and Osla Ray that they are basically adopting and welcoming them into the House of L. And, you know, Natasha's the one that asked John if he's okay with everything. Um, he says, they got the best parents in the whole world. He says, ah, oh, well, they kind of, did your folks not tell you they were adopting those two? Well, they did, kind of, I guess. I didn't completely understand the situation. It's great, though. I'm really happy for them. I will never forgive Bendis for aging up John. I will argue that. I met two people in a comic shop in Pittsburgh over the weekend, and we all talked about how Bendis was horrible for aging up John. And Brian, yeah. was, like, I, Brian was like, I knew you were going to say that. I'm like, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> it is. Uh you know, I, I I don't think it was necessary to rush to these stories for his character, although they are really good. A lot of people have been writing John very well, um, very lately, but I don't think I, I would have appreciated him growing more alongside of Damien. Mm -hmm. I do think it's interesting that if you look at what they've done with everybody, nobody has a cape but Clark now they're all wearing these like suit jackets and stuff. And, you know, we're at, we're at this basic Lex Luthor presenting something and Metallo shows up and they're going to this building that explodes. We get a great Clark Kent rip shirt rip and everybody's taking care of the falling glass. And I, Connor disappears for a split second and then we see Metallo holding Connor. So that was uh, the first story in this multi-story issue. Yeah. I love that you got the whole super family doing everything. Well, I, th I think it's kind of interesting the fact that everyone has these new modernized costumes except Clark has like the most traditional what I used to always look like forever look. Right. Like he doesn't even have the cuffs on his uh, suit anymore that they added, you know? So I do think it's interesting that he really is back to just being status quo Superman and everyone else has these new costumes, but this is part of the dawn of DC. <clears throat> now, the second story is several years ago. It's called home again, part one. 
written by our man Dan Jurgens. And this is back during the Superman, Lois and Clark run where Superman is still in hiding with John being eight and he's in the black suit, which I thought, which I think is interesting because wasn't that retconned out? Like, didn't Tom Taylor kind of retcon that out when he did the whole birth of John Kent thing? Being born in the fortress with Superman looking normal and everything. with So that mm. this wouldn't have taken place like this, because this is when they were in hiding. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I suppose. Yep. This is where everything gets muddy and complicated. <laughs> And basically, the premise of the story is they can't find the piece of Doombreaker, which still is not a great name. Yeah. Um, and we find out that John has it, actually. And there's a ship that crashes, and John goes to investigate. And a lady gets out of it and says, I certainly can, cutie. Care to take me to your king? And it says, next issue, when death comes calling. Yeah. You know, I kind of think part of the thing with the the infinite frontier and like um the the difference in the multiverse and the hyper time and um can I the just... divergent timelines and things like that is you can tell a story like this and just add more time to just that section of story of storytelling. You know what I Which mean? Is... Yeah, which is great, but it's also confusing when the story you're telling isn't part of the main story. It doesn't it can't connect back because um it just because it never existed, you know, like and I I started make talking with you guys the other day was like, you know, it's really confusing that we have this infinite frontier but now but then we have the omniverse, but then we try to put back the regular multiverse from dark crisis on infinite earths it's getting really complicated and it feels like there's a crisis every year to every other year there are no more spread out where you can actually follow the storylines um, right it's getting harder and harder to kind of stay up on stuff because they're trying to explain it just like we just are sitting here doing now um, but then we have another story in the issue, and that is Power Girl in Head Like a Hole Part 1. Now, Which, this was interesting, because this story takes place post-Lazarus Planet, um, uh, Assault on, yeah, Assault on Krypton. Yeah, which was a weird book. But um, which I haven't read yet. Um, it hasn't come out on Ultra. I actually suspect... Um, the first issue or two or something of Lazarus Planet to drop maybe even tomorrow as we speak. Maybe. Um, if not next week, I think tomorrow is actually uh, a 30 day release window for the first issues. Huh. Have um, it been 30 days already? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it's February now. That began in January. I just. I just think that Power Girl's story Which is, is why I love DC Ultra. Yes. Power Girl's <laughs> story is just interesting and like why not, are they going to bring her into the fold because even her suit in this she kind of has the the jacket and new look at, like the other super family members do. Right. And they talk about her expanding powers, her having some psychic powers and everything, which will differentiate her from other char other um, Kryptonian characters. And uh, I love, I, I thought it was hilarious because, you know, me and you know some ample women. Yes. And um, this is a real problem. Uh, but she says, listen, don't underestimate the ventilation. You should try a keyhole in your costume sometime. She said, I'll uh, take that under advisement. Actually, that's a lie. No, I won't. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> said, Whatever. Say hi to your boob sweat for me. I just laughed and I had to share the joke and it was pretty funny as well. It, it got a good, it got a good chuckle. As it should. 
Yeah, I, I just I just assume me and you have heard the same conversation. Oh yes, you know, not exactly about a a boob window or hmm. a keyhole as she called it, but <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure which is more disturbing of a phrase. The keyhole I, makes me wonder about a lot of different things. But... <laughs> It's a family show, Tyler. I know. That's why I'm not saying anything. <laughs> um, but I like that it's it's also a continuation from Dark Crisis, where Beast Boy got shot in the face, um, and right now he's having some um, psychological issues, and he's he's just he's been a like a, ca- a calf, like a small cow. Uh, and he's just remained this, and he hasn't talked or communicated with anybody. And Power G- Girl uses her her newfound psychic abilities to enter his mind, um, fight the Red, and talk to Beast Boy and help um, uh, debug <laughs> debug the code. Um, like genetic sequence or something mm-hmm. in his, in his blood or in his, in his body. Um, but she fixes him and, um, Garfield is back and I'm sure he's going to have some issues here moving forward. I mean, he just went through a tragic, um, a tragic assault, you know? Yep. You know, getting shot in the face by Deathstroke and being in a coma nearly dead. So it's going to be interesting to see where um, this action goes, but I'm digging. I like the three stories in one book with, you know, characters that touch all facets of the super family, which brings us to a member of the super family. We've never really talked about on this show and maybe in the future we'll dive deeper, but this section is now called who is the Superman of China? I, uh, recently, I just began reading about the Superman of China. It, I read it. I want to say back in 2017 or 2018. I just remember I was getting interested it. and I knew of it when it came out, but I got I, some I was of not on it. Trades from, you know, it was part of the rebirth. Um, and so, on March, <coughs> excuse me. On March 26, 2016, it was announced there would be a comic book series featuring a Chinese Superman who gains a portion of Superman's powers during DC Rebirth. The title was previously announced as The Super-Man, but was changed into New Superman once Yang came on board and pointed out that there is no Chinese word for the. The title initially shipped monthly. It became New Super-Man and the Justice League of China for issues 20 through 24. Kong Keenan is a superhero appearing in comic books published by DC and is known as the Superman of China. The character first appeared in Superman, New Superman number 1, July of 2016, was created by Jean Lun Yang and Victor Bogdanovich. I think Gene Yang is an awesome writer, and I really enjoy when he does Superman things. Um, the character bio of Kong Keenan is a 17-year-old high school student from Shanghai. When Keenan was young, his mother, Kwong, was killed in a, play, in a plane accident. Due to her death, Keenan would only often bully Luo Links, the son of Luo, I, I apologize for these names, who owned the airline of his, for his mother's death, and developed a strained relationship with his father, Kong Zong Dong, an auto repair shop owner who joined a clandestine writers group that Keenan described as a conspiracy nuts shortly after his wife's death. One day, while beating up Lynx, the two are accosted by Blue Condor, an American themed supervillain. Out of instinct, Keenan helps Lynx escape and stands up to Blue Condor, who mysteriously flees from him. Keenan's actions are captured on social media, turning him into a celebrity. Following an inter- interview with reporter Lainey Lan, Keenan is approached by a mysterious woman named Dr. Omen of the Ministry of Self-Reliance. Because of his heroic actions, Keenan is chosen to be the new Superman of China. 
Keenan is taken to the ministry's headquarters, the Oriental Pearl Tower, where he is given superpowers by an unusual form of kryptonite infused with Superman's chi, which was embedded with the life force of the recently deceased New 52 Superman. All right, that's a lot to digest. <clears throat> and we're going to touch on it here in a moment after I get some, a little bit more history and stuff out here. <clears throat> Initially, Kong Keenan was a self-centered bully who cared only for himself and looked down on those he did not consider as important as he was. This was all changed after standing up to Blue Condor, receiving the powers of Superman. Keenan is brash, headstrong, and frankly rushes into situations without thinking. His core character is basically good, though he tends to make rash decisions based on his emotions. After the apparent death of his father, his attitude towards others changed and he became more focused. He has great respect towards Superman after meeting with him and receiving his advice and encouragement. Now, powers and ability. <coughs> excuse me. Powers and ability. Originally a normal human, Kong Keenan gained Kryptonian powers after being infused with Superman's chi by platinum kryptonite. Initially, Keenan had little control over his powers and would occasionally fluctuate when he lost control. Under I Ching's tutelage, Keenan was able to organize his superpowers around the Baga, eight trigrams used in Taoism that represent the fundamental principles of reality. By corresponding each power with a trigram and focusing his chi into specific parts of his body, which include, I'm not even going to pronounce the Chinese part, belly, invulnerability, fist, superhuman strength, ears, superhuman hearing, Thighs, x-ray vision, feet, superhuman speed, eyes, heat vision, mouth, freeze breath, head, flight. At first, only being able to activate one power at a time, Keenan's synchronization with the mystical red jade dragon unlocks his full potential. And as my wife is instructing me, it is actually Taoism. And I apologize for mispronouncing it. Thank you, Jania. I'll probably get smacked for that later. Um, uh, this is why I read in my head, people. After, uh, after I Ching bestows the mantle as the living personification of Yin and Yang upon him, Keenan gained magical abilities and resistance to magic, as well as the ability to enter separate Yin or Yang forms. In his Yang form, Keenan glows in a pure white light that can be channeled into energy blasts, and his Kryptonian powers become greatly enhanced. However, Keenan's personality becomes an arrogant and violent in this form. In his yin form, Keenan glows in a black, shadowy substance and gains a ghost-like form that makes him intangible and can fire electric-like blasts from his fingers. Much like his yang form, Keenan's yin form changes his personality to be detached and lethargic. Keenan's yin form also allows him to travel to the realm of ghosts, but at a heavy price. Much like Superman and other Kryptonians, Keenan becomes weakened when exposed to kryptonite. Okay, that's my quick breakdown. My thoughts on the, the Superman of China is I love the character. I really enjoyed his character. I love the background and everything that they, they really do into him. But what I didn't like was, in a way, I feel like they short they shortchange him by just calling him new Superman or the Superman of China. Like, I really feel like he has enough. He is his own character. You could almost take out the Kryptonian aspect. And I think he would be a much more powerful, stronger character. Um, Cause I really think I, I would like to see him get his own title again. So it really was a great story. Like I say, Yang, writes great Superman stories. And this was an amazing read that I highly recommend it to anybody. I think I even mentioned it back when I originally read it um, that I recommended it, but I just feel like he gets shortchanged by kind of being tied to Superman and not really allowing to be his own character. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose that is uh a possibility. Um, I hadn't even gotten to the point. Like, I don't, I didn't see, see where, how his powers, like I haven't gotten to platinum kryptonite. Um, I haven't gotten to like, how he's able to focus the chi 
into different aspects and You'll use the there. powers like that. No, I thought it was really cool um, to hear about that. So, cause I've been wondering as to like, why, why did he have powers? Why is, um, uh, why doesn't he have powers now? Um, why do they keep fluctuating the way they do? I left a so, lot out too. I'm just, you know, there's, and just think about what I'm saying about how I feel like he got shortchanged and how great of a character he can to stand on his own as you continually read the book. Because, well, heck, you, I mean, you really haven't even seen too much of him since his book. Right. That's what um, I'm saying. He needs his own book back. So just for the fact that he's even showing up with the super family currently is kind of cool. Um, because what's, um, the, the flash of China, the flash of China pops up I, a couple times in regular flash. Um, but other than that, like, I don't think any of the other, I don't think the, the Batman appears or anything. So the Batman of China, but anyways, um, I mean, I've seen the Batman of China and, um, the Wonder Woman of China. Yeah, she, she appeared, but I thought, but I can't remember where all they've appeared at, but it's a really good book. That's all I'm going to say. But that was kind of our quick, like, history lesson of. Um, of the character. So as we go into. You know, this whole super family book. We'll have a better idea of. Who she is. Yeah, because. You know, currently they've got the Lazarus Planet and the Dawn of DC going on, and they've got um, uh, books coming out. So there's going to be like action comics. There's going to be a new Superman book, and John's got his own book, um, Adventures of Superman, John oh, Kent. And, and we're going to talk more about John here soon in his own book. Yeah, we're just going gonna... There's some news that came out today. Yeah, and I'm Tom gonna... Taylor. I was like, ooh, look at that. Yeah, and I want to. Uh... I want to dissect that a little bit more once that book actually comes out. Um, but yeah, that's what we have here for this episode. It's kind of a roller coaster episode just because of some technical issues. But thanks everybody for hanging in there with us. And remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.